Holly. Today I'm going to show you how to plant peppers and what to, whether to decide to plant them in a row or to plant them flush with the ground. So let's see here. Hope everyone's having a great Sunday. There we go. Just want to get the camera turned around there. So over here, let's right, widen this a little. I've got all of my bell peppers and sweet peppers on the right side of the garden. And I've got them separated by basil. And then I've got my hot peppers over here. So when you have peppers, you want to separate your sweet peppers from your hot peppers because through cross pollination, the, the, your hot peppers will become mild and your mild peppers will become hot. So that's why you want to do it this way. It's not wrong to plant your peppers not on a mound. For me, I have a lot of really lots of clay soil and you want the water to be able to drain. The roots want to be well drained. But they like to be moist so we will put them in the hole and i'll show you what i add to it and um and just show you how i'll shore these up without having to use cages so the wind doesn't totally destroy them as they get heavy and big hi mike how are you doing today get this set up over here Throughout doing this, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll show you some of my tricks. So I kind of got the garden spaced out to where I know that I have enough of my rows dug up. And I know that all the plants that I have are going to fit in here. So there we go. So I'm going to kind of move, now that I know where they're, they're going to go, I'm going to move some of them out of the way. So as I'm doing this, I'm, my clumsy person won't knock them over and ruin them after all this time of growing them inside. So pepper plants, you want to space 12 to 18 inches apart. And I have my handy dandy doo -doo -doo. This rake is 12 inches. So that's nice to be able to measure how far apart to space everything. And since I've got all of my holes nice and nicely dug, or my rows all set up, each one of these rows, holes is going to get dug up. I'm going to dig it deep with an auger. And in the bottom, I'm going to play some fish, some coffee grains that have already been, they're wasted coffee grains, so they've already been diluted. So they will be. They won't be acidic, they'll be neutral to the soil. So depending on whether you have acidic soil or if you have alkaline soil, will determine whether you want to use um, fresh coffee grains or brewed ones. Yes, I need to get a GoPro. I actually have one, so maybe I will just start trying to figure out how to put it on to do it. I'm just over here gathering some stuff real quick. So I have everything that I'm going to need. I've got eggshells, coffee grains, I've got jug for diluting some water, I've got Epsom salts. But I'll mix in the water and I'll show you the rations for that. And then a tablespoon to measure because you put one tablespoon of Epsom salt for every gallon of water. I 
And last but not least, a bunch of fish. And sorry, the neighbor kids are loud. They're playing outside. It's Sunday for them. You can see where I'm working there. All right, so first things first, I take this drill right in the center. It's easier than digging the hole because then my dirt will get all messed up. See, I can already tell there's a ton of clay in there just by drilling like that. I'm gonna go quite a ways down when I bury the fish. Probably about, um, say at least 12 inches. Now that I got that hole in there, I'm gonna dig a little bit of that dirt out. You can just dig that up, but because of the clay I have out here, it's really hard once you get past about 12 inches. Did I just give everybody motion sickness? Probably. Sorry. Trying to get my other camera. I need to have to place it just right. Okay, so there's my home. Just dig out some of the dirt. Hi, Mandy. How are you? Hope you're having a good day. Yeah, coffee greens. Um, increase the acidity of the soil if they're fresh cow coffee grains. If they've gone through the coffee maker, they actually t turn it neutral. So they're not acidic. So you have to decide if your soil is acidic or if it's alkaline. So if it's alkaline, then I'd want to add some clay to it. So you can see I'm down quite a ways down. So I'm going to add some clips of fish into there. So this is all leftover freezer burnt fish. So I'm just take a couple chunks like this and I'm gonna cut them up with some scissors. And I'm putting them down deep because, so fish has potassium and potassium is really good for fish. So that's why I'm using that. And it's not gonna give it to it right away. It'll just break down, break down over time, over the season. I'm gonna take some eggshells, I'm gonna break some up and stick it at the bottom of the hole. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of coffee grains and pour it at the bottom, not too much. And what the, that, that's gonna serve two purposes. One purpose is gonna be to um, keep pet, pets, cats, whatever, from digging up your fish and your, and your plants. Plus it, um, it also has potassium in it. So pepper plants are different than tomato plants. Tomato plants, you want to plant deep. Pepper plants, you just want to do flush with the top of the soil. So I'm going to be careful not to go too deep with this. Put a little bit of dirt to cover up those coffee grains. So the most important part is determining whether your soil is alkaline, whether you have clay, clay or sandy soil. If you have sandy soil, you're not gonna wanna put your stuff up on a mound like I have right here. The neighbor kid has been crying like all day. For like the last 10 minutes, of course. So in this gallon of, of water, 
my birthday first before I put the back. Ugh, sorry, I'm tongue tied. It's been a long day trying to get all this stuff done. So I got my little measuring spoon out here. I'm gonna add a tablespoon to my water. And then I'm gonna fill up my jug. That's gonna take forever, so I'm gonna take it off this little water saving thing. So I'm just filling up the water real quick over here. All right, so now I have this mixed with one tablespoon of Epsom salt. And I'm gonna put a little bit into the roots in the container before I dump it out, before I pull the plant out. And I hear all kinds of conflicting things of whether you should use Epsom salt, do or don't. I tried it, I think for the first time four years ago, and I've always had really good results. I saw a difference. I actually did like every other plant to see which ones, if it, it did any good, and the other ones did get bigger. Whether it was coincidence or something else, I don't know. So I use it, and you can decide whether you wanna use it. You need to gently to separate the roots because they're kind of got some root rot going on. Not rot, but they've been root bound, is what I just wanted to say. So I've got my hole nice and good. I'll go just a little bit deeper. So I want to make sure that it's flush and that it's sturdy. It gets pretty windy out here sometimes, and I want to make sure that the wind doesn't break it first day out. So I'm going to put it in here and pack the dirt firmly on top of it because that's going to help it to stay stable. So uh, there's different ways when you have your pepper plants, there's a couple of different ways. People say cut off the tops. Some people say don't cut off the tops. So the difference is when you're putting your plant in the ground. Let's see if you can see that good. Give it a little flippy flip. All right, so at the top of the plant, you can see right here, there was buds. I'd cut them off because they had aphids in them. So a lot of people will take this plant and they'll cut it in half because it'll produce more stems, it'll produce more flowers. It does produce more flowers, but what it also ends up doing is you'll get more fruit production or get more peppers to grow but then in the end they're not as big so you can have more peppers and have them be smaller or you can have less peppers and have them be bigger and way more so by not cutting off the stem halfway down you end up getting bigger fruit less you get you have less of them they're bigger but you still have a bigger production when you don't because they still, they're, I think it's 18% heavier than when you cut the top off. So for me, 
is a personal choice. Do you want big peppers or small peppers? So some of these I had to cut because of aphids were in there. So I'm doing a look to make sure I don't have any lingering they want to get rid of before I let it go. And then I always take the scissors and cut off these two bottom stems. Taylor, I'm on, I'm on stream. Look. I'm over here. I'm on. I'm filming. Do you want me to show my whole chat what you've got? Yeah, you do. Show them. No. Show them your shed. No. That's pretty cool. Bury him deeper so they don't come back to haunt my soul. Did you guys get to see that shed that he just showed you? He went shed hunting today, it was pretty cool. Okay, YouTube is weird. Hold on. Why does it do that? Okay, there we go. So there's our first one done. And we're gonna we're gonna repeat this with every single one of these. So if you want to stay in chat, you're welcome to. And we'll kind of look at the different ones. So that was a yellow pepper or a red pepper, and I stick these right back in at the base so I'll remember which ones are which because the bell, the bell pepper leaves all look similar to me so if they're yellow or red or green I can't tell the difference from their leaves until they ripen. Cole now you got me paranoid about not having a GoPro for me. Way to go! All right, so let's do plant number two. So we're going to do the same process. We're going to measure at least 12 inches. So that was about perfect spacing right there. Making a big fat mess over there with that water running. This one's a little bit more sandy. Can you tell the difference? Oh, now I hit the clay. So about 12 inches down, there's tons of clay. And each year it's getting a little bit better. Um, I think it's supposed to rain Tuesday. It's supposed to rain here. So I was wanting to give at least these guys at least one day of being outside. I have had them in the wind upstairs in the bay windows to start getting them hardened. So I opened all the windows up and it's been pretty windy. So hopefully, hopefully it's not a, hopefully it's not a hard rain. Take about half this fish. And I literally have this down like 12 inches. It'll just break down and the roots will grow deep and, and go fetch it, fetch, fetch the nutrition. I've seen people put um, the eggshells up top. I've seen them mix it in different ways. This is just the way I do it because it's worked for me. So I just do what I know works. I'm not trying to 
I will experiment with new things, but I won't experiment on all my plants with new things, just in case it's a big fail. So now I'm gonna cover some of this dirt in there. If I had milk, I gave, I gave the plants milk, um, what was it, two days ago? You missed it, maybe you saw it. I can't see where my hole is. This camera is different than my other camera. I like I knew where to position it. So sorry. I'll say that a hundred times. So let's see if that's going to be deep enough. Not quite. So I kind of buried some of that soil. This one's a yellow pepper. Give it a little bit of water or Epsom salt. I don't give it a ton when I first plant them. I kind of want to see what they're looking like. I'm checking for aphids because I kind of got some aphids in my house. I think I've got pretty much all of them vacuumed off of the vacuum, which worked amazing. Usually it's hard once they get start to get an infestation, but worked out pretty well. So this one has does have some buds on it and you want to take the buds off when you first plant them in the ground because you want all of their energy, all the energy going to the root system before starting to produce fruit. So I don't want them focused on fruit right now. So I'm going to go through. Right to bam, bone down. Love you right back there, buddy. Let's see. Dang it. Now I've done a good job on this. Try to pay my son to come film me, but he's too shy. Mike, did you get to see the shed that he brought out? From shed hunting found him a big old moose shed so i'm gonna go through here i'm gonna take off these little buds they're growing right through here so if anybody's just joined it's your choice whether you want to take half of the plant off or not I don't unless it's damaged or infested with bugs because I like to have bigger fruit. Like this one's got a little bit of aphids in it. So I'm actually going to pour some water on them. Now that I'm outside, there's other ways that you can do to control the aphids. And I'll show you a different, 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 couple different ways throughout the year. But I'm just going to kind of knock them off with some water. I rub them gently. Never really had aphids on my pepper plants. It's really weird. I was just from being inside too long. So we got another one down. And I always say these containers, they're handy. I use them like they're probably like 10 years old to just reuse them. Oh, don't forget to put the tag in so we know what, what plant we have here. So this one's a golden wonder. So have been anybody been watching anything interesting today? Sun's out beating up wildlife person. He better not be beating up wildlife. Kick his butt. It's not that time of year yet. I know he goes on these really long, really long hikes. I'm gonna take these bottom leaves off down here. He probably hikes probably like 10 miles when he goes up. It's kind of cool. I'm glad he does that versus staying home watching TV, playing video games, I guess. Got my rig for measuring to make sure I'm going 12 inches away.
So there, center to center. So right here's where our next one's gonna go. Get my cheater drill out. wait for this clay might be so difficult having clay is kind of nice in a way because it does keep a lot of the moisture in so i don't have to water as much as long as i keep an eye on my plants and make sure they're not getting too much water Does anybody want some fish with some coffee grains? At least a neighbor kid that's quit crying today. I swear it's been an all day thing. Eggshells. It's not really hard to plant, but it's just knowing how to plant them. So this is just um, striper, striped bass from Lake Powell. You could do salmon, you could do, some people use, um, oh, sardines. But this is just caught fish that I don't want to waste. So I'll put it to good use. All those are little chunks of clay. All right, this is one of the plants I ended up having to cut the top off. This one was so infested with aphids. So we'll, we'll be able to see the difference between the ones that I did cut off and the ones I didn't. These are green bell peppers. Didn't get this um, soil super wet before I started. This clay, like, I don't know, sometimes when you step on clay, for me anyway, I sink in it. So got the plant flush. Take these bottom ones off. They've already got some new ones growing out through that little spot right there. So by cutting off the top, what happens is it ends up shooting, sending more plants down, down lower. When you leave them, they don't spend so much time setting up their second leaves. Don't ask me at science. This spot was just a little bit more dry than the other ones. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of this Epsom salt water. Let it soak in. So once, once I get all these plants all planted, what I will end up doing is, I got a bunch of leaves from last year, which are perfect for adding like a mulch to it. So that'll keep the moisture on the hill. So it'll help keep the soil this nice and moist while still allowing the root system to drain.
I'm going to get the measure thing out. So there's 12 inches. Thanks for stopping by, Mandy. I hope you have a good night. And I hope your dad's doing well, too. is more like probably about eight inches down versus ten inches down on this hole. Which is brew. What makes me so I think I mix all this stuff together. All I need is some chicken bones. This plant's huge. Look at how big that is. Just from being inside. It's ginormous. Nice bottom bars. Does anybody have any questions about pepper plants? I grow lots of peppers because I like to make salsa. And come, I don't know, was it last year? It was three dollars for two of them. It's like heck no. So I was all I was able to make all I think. I think I made eight batches of salsa last year, and I only had to make one trip to the store to buy pepper plants, which was a huge savings. It saved me about $200 just in pepper plants alone. I'm going to take out these little guys down here. You go through and take off the buds they're growing. This pepper is, this one is a yellow. This one's a yellow pepper. And I bought them, try to think how long ago I bought them. I know they've been inside, it feels like forever, but I think they've been inside for about six weeks. I was hoping to get them out last week, but it was still so cold at night. Like this week is barely, 
think the lows are finally going to start being 50, 58 and higher. And pepper plants like the soil to be, they like, it, they like the soil 60 degrees or warmer. So when you put them outside, you want to make sure not just that the, the, day, the nighttime temperatures, you want them to make sure they're around 60 if you can. They, just, they do better. They'll thrive. The other ones, they'll still survive, but they just do better at this temperature. All right, so then in the mix of all this, we've got our basil. And basil is not complicated um, to plant. And I've got them planted because they're companion plants with peppers. But they also are going to act as a barrier between my... Gosh, I can't speak. Between my bell peppers, or my spicy peppers, and my not spicy. So my sweets and my spicy. So as they're getting pollinated, I'm not going to end up with hot bell peppers. Which I would lo love hot bell peppers, but most people in my family wouldn't like that too much. And these things have been the hardest things. They like a lot of water. They like to be moist. And so the inside, because they're so huge, I've been struggling to keep them watered. So I'm, I'm more excited to get these guys out of the house. So I'm going to want to try to get at least two feet, three feet between these peppers if I can, by separating this. These get really tall. This is a sweet basil. Let's see that. And I'm doing the same with the basil. I'm still going to put um, fish and eggs and all that stuff. should be deep enough all right so on basil plants I don't know if you can see right here I see each of these are individual plants so technically I could separate those out and I'd have like six individual plants but for my purpose here I don't need I don't need that much basil four plant four basil plants is plenty enough for to make spaghetti sauce and that's what I use it for Oops, almost forgot to put the fish in there. My witch's brew. On probably one of these pepper plants, or these basils, I'll, I'll do one without the fish and the eggs and see if I can tell the difference. Because I did that with the tomatoes one year to see. And I did notice a huge, it was probably a two foot difference I noticed in height. And that's not exa exaggeration. Hi, Squiddy. Hi, Skylar. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. Thanks for coming. So if those who just joined it, or if you have, were already here, if you have questions, I'll try to see them as I'm going along. This plant is so dry. So I'm not using any kind of a root starter. I use Epsom salt. I don't use any of that fancy, fancy stuff. I just do, try to do everything that's just, everything I have at home or easy to buy or make. I haven't really seen my plants struggle by not using fertilizers. I still feel like they thrive. This is a lot of clay right here.
after I get this row done, I'll show you um, a cool trick I use to put the line and then I'll let you guys go and I'll finish doing the rest of them. This clay is not cooperating right in this spot. This used to be how my whole entire garden used to be. It used to be all clay like this. So I'm on year eight now of being here and it's finally starting to get better. These um, basil plants start to get a flower at the top and they already had started to flower. And you want to trim them back because it just still keeps producing leaves. As soon as they flower, it tells the plant that it's time to die. So as long as you keep trimming them back, they'll, they will live and keep producing leaves. A lot of flowers and plants, once their flowering cycle is done, they die. So if you'll, even like use your regular flowers, if you keep them trimmed back, it, they have, it tricks the plant into thinking that it hasn't produced or reproduced, so it'll just keep producing more flowers. Don't see the buds on this one. You can kind of start to see it growing right through there. But since I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and trim it. And I'm just going to trim it down just a little bit lower because this plant's going to get huge anyway. And that's where you want to check too for your aphids. They like to go where there's new leaves, new stems. So right now I can already see some aphids and I'm just going to cut them and just chuck them right out of the garden because I don't even want to mess with them this early in the year. So this plant you just kind of cut back. That's crazy. I've never, never, it, in all my gardening, I've never had aphids on my basil or my pepper plants. This is the first. Something in the dirt I got from the store must have brought them in. So always check your new your new growth on leaves. That's where you're gonna start to see aphids first. If you can get your aph even if you cut the leaf off, leaf the whole leaf off to get rid of it, if you can get your aphids right when they start to hatch, you can keep them under control. Give this a little bit of water. It's crazy on the internet. You know, once since I've started doing my gardening stuff and trying to see what works or what doesn't, I get 20 different ways how to do the exact same, just playing plants. I'm like, who's right, who's wrong? So this is what I do. It works for me. And I've always been, I've always gotten good crops from it. So I'm teaching you what I do for me to have good plants. And then you can kind of decide what is it you want to do. Gardening is a lot of trial and error. Your area might need something different than what my area needs. And once you find something that works and it works well, stick with it. Mine is all about once I get my plants in the ground, I want everything to be easy to maintain How'd you like my face, huh? Let's see. The Epsom salt's a perfect little bag for that stand right there. I'm gonna hire me a camera person. This is for the birds.
on pepper is my uh, I forgot to tell you, okay, like about eight to ten, eight to twelve hours of sun a day. So in the evening, they'll get a lot, plenty of shade over here, which is nice. And once the tomato plants get big, they'll actually shade them during the hot, hot part of the sun in the summer. So it ends up being just about perfect. Push up some eggshells. Coffee grains. You can put just a little bit of dirt to cover that because I don't want to go that deep. And once again, this spot's got tons of clay. I'm gonna cheat on this one. I'm actually gonna throw a lot of this dirt out because I don't like that dirt. So this is a pimento. So this is a jalapeno big guy. You can see the leaves are a little bit, they're not as broad as the other plants. I kind of want to think that one of those pepper plants over there is actually a jalapeno, but with the wrong tag in it. So it looks a lot like this one. And that can happen. People mess up. Remember to plant the pepper plants flush and not deep. I am a cheater squid. That auger is my favorite thing that I have ever bought in my entire life. Got it on sale spring ago. Who's that? Thanks for saying hi, Eagle. Um, yeah, so it was on, it was in the clearance department. Um, I don't know, I think it had rust on it or something. And I didn't realize it was to dig holes with. I'm like, oh, that would be perfect for, that would be perfect in my garden for tilling up the soil when I can't reach into it. And I'll tell you what, with having clay and flower beds, it's really nice. It's probably my best, that's my best purchase for the garden ever. And it's not cheating, it's called doing things smarter. Okay, this is our last one, and then I'll show you the string trick that I'm going to use so I don't have to put cages up. 
And then I'll let you guys go. So now that I'm back to the pepper plants, I'm going to actually measure. So 12 to 18 inches apart, which is about right here. Poppy, little bit of eggshells. First baby ducks. Oh. Apparently, there's baby ducks swimming. Who would have thought that a man would get excited about baby ducks? fall apart. This plant, this is the first time I've had a plant inside struggle so much. This pepper plant's struggled for quite a bit and I cut some of it back and now it's starting to grow pretty good. This one is another, so this is the exact same plant that is right next to it. And I bought them the exact same time and this one, I don't know why, I mean it could just be genetics, survival of the fittest. So we'll see how he does. Is that sexist if I said that plant was a, a he? A big guy? Sexist, racist? I don't know. All right, I'll show you how I do, how I do my trellis right quick and I'll let you, let you go. I'll do the rest of the guys in later. Baby duck? I said the first batch of baby duck. Sorry, I didn't make it. Oh, you're fine. I'm sorry. I just said they're still there. I'm still filming that. Alright, gotta get some things out of the way so I can do this. I haven't figured out this stupid phone. I'm just gonna have to walk around filming so for this angle. Blah, 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 blah. I can't talk today. Too wore out from pulling weeds. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do right quick this trellis. So there's this fence, this lattice I have. 
is twofold. I'm going to use it to I'm going to use it to run my trellis. And that's just what it, it's just going to be a wire. And I actually have wire from when my wash my dryer broke last year. I'm like, oh, that'll be perfect. So I have this, this is actual wire. I'm going to take it and run it from one end of this fence to the other end. And it's pretty, you can see it's really, it's really quite thick. So then I'm hoping to get away with that, with not having to put cages up. And some of these I might have to twist together. And of course I still have clothesline on them. I don't know if anybody's ever dried their clothes outside. I love having a dryer, but the way your clothes smell and your your, and your shirts are just, they don't have any wrinkles if you hang them right. It's not the funnest thing in the world. All right, so I'm just gonna take these, and I'm just gonna twist these wires together because I know it's not long enough already. I thought my dog was out here. It's this wire behind me. That's funny. This plant's really big and the wind was blowing. So I took this coat hanger right here and just kind of braced it up because I didn't want it to break. All right, so now that guy's out of the way. I'm gonna take this wire and go kind of low. I'm going to put an eyeball where I think is going to be the center of that row. So I think it's going to be right here. And the wire is nice. It's just twisting. It's just really bendy, but it's strong. about the peppers I am the basil. Actually, I'm going to move that one rung over on the other end. That's the beauty of the wire. It moves pretty easy. Actually, I think if I just put it on the other side, taller I can actually move it up higher for now I just want to make sure that the wind blows I'm not going to break these guys
You could do this with string. You want to use a sturdy string if you do. For now, I'm just going to twist this right here. I don't know if you can see, I'm wanting this to be just a slightly closer to protect that, that one plant right there. See that guy right there? So I'm just going to take out the other side of this fence. I just moved it one, just did it one rung over. It's actually the same one I just put on, on the other side just to move it an inch. This wire, I think you would get like 50 feet of this clothesline wire for, I think I got it for $15, maybe 20. It's been kind of nice. I've used it for a couple different things, but this year I'm just like, oh, that'd be perfect. So now I've got it nice and tight. The wind blows, should get those plants some good support. I'll end up cutting that in a minute. What I'll probably end up doing is I'll take a piece of this wire off and I'll actually take it and just put a little wire to, to bring, I'll bring a little wire and then I'll bring those closer together and just wire as I go down here, if that makes sense. All right, does anybody have any questions? Um, I hope you all had a good night. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. Um, if there's something that I left out or forgot if, or something I got wrong, always leave a message and let me know. I'm happy to learn. Um, have a great Friday night or Friday. I don't even know what day it is. It's Sunday. Oh my gosh. Have a great Sunday evening.